anywhere. I, I didn't even look. Where is the game? This is uh, not a question for me, Michael. I've got to be honest with you. I okay, do not good. know. <laughs> I'm glad we both. You know, that makes me feel really happy because we both don't know. We've been so consumed we by have. the NFL that w I think that's good. You got look. You this multitasking crap doesn't work. Like you got to be consumed with what you're doing. I get it. I'll figure it out. I'll Google it. I mean, as Al Davis used to say to me, I could look it up, kid. Yes, we can. We can look up anything. I'm trying to Google it right now. Uh, in Indy, there we go. Look at that. Great. We did it. February oh, 16th to 18th oh, nice. in Indy. See, but I'm with you because we talk about this a lot um, when it comes to being a good better, right? About having your things that you have yeah. as like the isolated sports that you are an expert in, right? And you are a former NFL GM. We're hosting the show two hours a day, talking all things NFL all day, every day. Okay, cut <laughs> us some slack on this. We're, we're transitioning. Yeah. I mean, we all can't be like Will Hill and, and be able to be an expert on every field. I mean, that's impossible. Mm. There's only one Will you know, Hill. What, we know that. What's that guy get? And paid. He's a GM in every league. Every sport. He's amazing. It's unbelievable. He's got <laughs> such a, a diversity portfolio. If only Steve Wilkes and the 49er defense had what he had, they would oh. have not lost that wow. game. Wow. Anyway, we had I to go we there. Segment Mike. To get to. We had to go there, I'm Michael, sorry. especially as we've got, you know, we've Stormy, got the Chiefs We did not touch on, on this, though. Go for we it. did not touch on this before we go. I don't know if I, I don't look at noise or news or noise, but there is has to be some rumblings in that building as Wilkes coming back mm. because Kyle didn't really solidify it. Yeah, I, I can understand that being a question. And it's funny, I was talking to you last week about my my little sister and her 49ers knowledge and how she was giving me a full... My, my sister, by the way, for anyone who's listening, is nine years old. So she is all <laughs> in on the San Francisco 49ers. Before the game, she's given me this breakdown of the Super Bowl. Like, Stormy, did you know what a good processor of information Brock Purdy is? I'm like, okay, sister, let's take a step back for, her, for a moment here. But she um, was... Uh, words cannot describe. She was all in. She was talking about the defense. She was like, I think the only way we lose this is if Steve Wilkes messes it up. Like, can you believe that? And so obviously the defense got tired. It was not Steve Wilkes' fault, but the back end of the season certainly did not live up to the expectations of that group. No question. I mean, and I think to me with Kyle not answering it, look, I think, you know, I believe this, and this is not a knock on Steve. I believe they have to diversify their portfolio. Mm -hmm. I, they, they're great in the defensive front. We know Armstead was hurt. That came out after the game. We know Hargrave was hurt with the thumb injury, which makes it hard for defensive linemen. I get all that. But when you're a zone team, it's hard to play man-to-man. -man. I mean, all you have to do is look at Jim Beheim, the great zone, the 2-3 the, the zone that basically looked like it was a 3-3 zone the way they played yeah. it, or John Chaney in his match zone that he ran at Temple. Those guys, when they installed the zone, they started with man-to-man -man because they understood you, you have to learn how to play man-to-man -to, -man to be a good zone team. If you're just a zone team, you can't play man-to-man. -man. And I think that's – if you want to say anything about the Niners since 19 till now – to me, that sums it up, Beth, perfectly. Yeah, I'm with you. And, and we do have a headline as we get to news or noise here that involves Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. So let's run that open. Time for news or noise. Is it news? Corleone is a man who insists on hearing bad news immediately. Or just noise. Are you going to act like this is news? Just noise. noise. Let's separate the impactful from the insignificant with one simple question. News or noise? Okay, Michael, well, there were a lot of questionable comments in the post game from Super Bowl 58, but none more concerning, I guess would be the word, than the San Francisco 49ers players saying and admitting openly they did not know the rules to overtime. Kyle Shanahan said in his Tuesday availability, we told everyone as we were waiting for the coin toss to review everything and make sure they're sure before we go out. So we asked position coaches to do that, but I didn't cover it in the meeting on Super Bowl week. I don't think that changes anything. News or noise that the 49ers didn't know the rules? I think it's a lot of noise because to me, the, you know, what he said later about he decides based on the analytics. Look, here's what I do know. And I said this on Monday before we had this. The 49ers are very analytical. Mm -hmm. They spend a lot of time on analytics. And so they have, you know, the, the, the president of, of their operation, Prague, he's very analytical. They knew the rules. Now, the fact they don't tell the players the rules, I mean, sometimes, you, I mean, Hardeman didn't know the rules and the, and the Chiefs are talking about they did. So what do you make of that? To me, it's a lot of noise. To me, they had a plan and their plan was they were trying to get to the third possession. The Chiefs had a plan. 
that they wanted to win the game and they would have gone for two. So they had a lot of two point plays in their repertoire. Yeah. And okay. The third one possession ultimately won, wouldn't the have other mattered. One didn't. Yeah. E either way, it's like right. that third possession could wouldn't have mattered if they ended up whether they either win or lose on that second possession. There wouldn't have been a third possession. It sounds like regardless based on the Chiefs thinking, but maybe because I mean, if he throws the ball, to, if he throws the ball to Ayuk in the end zone, if they don't blow the protection, we're coming down. The game's coming down to one play. I think and we would not be having this conversation about who knew the rules, who didn't. That's why I think it's noise. Yeah, I, I think that it just gets blown up more because you do hear all of the Chiefs players and their comments about how it was important for us to go over, which makes me think maybe Nicole Hardman just wasn't listening in those meetings. But the 49ers <laughs> the, players Not all of them it. listen, Stormy. <laughs> not all of them listen. Okay, uh, this is a big one. Again, news that kind of got shuffled under the rug because of the Super Bowl, but Albert Breer, great friend of the show here, of course, works with Sports Illustrated and MMQB. He asked Falcons owner... Arthur Blank, why Belichick was the wrong fit in Atlanta. Here was his response. He said, it wasn't that he was the wrong fit. We had 14 candidates. We always wanted him. All the issues and questions about Bill relative to power structure were completely unfounded and untrue and based on nothing. All of my discussions with him, he was nothing but collaborative, inclusive, anxious to work with personnel and scouting alongside him. And then added a little bit later that we felt for a variety of reasons when we weighed Raheem Morris versus everybody that he was the best choice for us. What did you take away from that statement? News or noise? I mean, what, what could you take away from it? Raheem Morris won 21 games as a head coach. You got a guy who won six Super Bowls. So what Arthur Blank is telling us is Raheem's a better coach than Bill. I mean, what else could you take from so it? That's the news of that story. I mean, that's the story, right? You're, so really what Albert should have done is said, Arthur, are you really saying that Bill, that Raheem is the best coach for your team? And then you're going to go out there and sell that to your fan base that we're committed to winning. I mean, to me, it's news because it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's news. So that's why I'm confused because the line I bolded here was the quote where he said, we always wanted him. Like if I'm reading between the lines, this looks like a man who didn't hire his first choice and he didn't really answer the question yep. here from Breer either. It's like, if it wasn't that Belichick didn't fit, did. it's, it's that Raheem Morris fits better. And that's just... What? Well, no. here is what it was. Arthur had a vote. Rich McKay had a vote. Terry Fontenot had a vote. Okay? And most of the time, every owner that I've worked for, their votes have five times the power of your vote. Okay? But not in Atlanta. So it went two to one in favor of, of Raheem. There it is. Arthur got I me. Mean, he's clearly saying that he went with the collaborative effort. Yeah. Because the one, the one word that's missing in what you read to me is... I always wanted Belichick, not we always wanted Belichick. See, there's the there yeah. was the there's the difference. I wanted Belichick. That's confirmed. Mm. We never wanted Belichick. That's confirmed. That internal pressure getting to you. But I mean again, no shade to Raheem Morris. It's just one thing is not like no, the other, it, resume wise. That's all I'm saying. But okay, we, we, we got a couple no more that we got to hit here, Michael. According to right. Adrian Wojnarowski and Ramona Shelburne of ESPN, over a 24-hour window prior to the NBA trade deadline, the Warriors made an unsuccessful bid trying to convince LeBron James to leave the Lakers and go to the Golden State Warriors. And that included a couple owner-to-owner -owner conversations. News or noise that the Warriors tried to get LeBron and he declined? I think it's news. I definitely think they did. I mean, and, and here's why it's news. They should try to get LeBron. Like, if you're not you're not doing your job, if you don't try to go after somebody you think you have a chance to get, right? It's it, You're not doing your job. Like, if you want to get the first pick in the draft, no matter what Ryan Poles says, it's going to take a lot. You owe it to the organization to make that call and see actually what is a lot. Define what a lot is. So, yeah, I think it's news, and I applaud them for trying to do it. You know, I, I applaud them for Mike Dunleavy Jr. for being aggressive and trying to go after the guys. I mean, that's now you're telling your team, look, we're trying to win here. From a legacy standpoint, would that, like, affect him at all? Because you understood at first when he goes to Miami and you learn how to win and you have that collection of guys. But would that not be something that's like a downer on him that the team he tried to put together in L.A. as GM LeBron didn't work out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Le one thing LeBron is, is, is there's no he, – he, he can change. Obviously, he loves living in Los Angeles and L.A. He doesn't want to leave, but – 
I think to me there when he goes into the Basketball Hall of Fame I, I'm not sure what team will go in as because he's changed right we know Jordan's a bull even though he played for the Wizards you know we know there's certain players that last forever I think I think that narrative got changed the way LeBron handled it and I'm not saying it's a bad thing I'm not I'm really not Super quick, according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport, Aaron Rodgers has been recruiting Devontae Adams to the Jets, but the Raiders want to win, believe they can win, have zero plans to trade him. News or noise? I don't, I think that's news, and I'm not sure it's true. I was told mm. a lot of people that interviewed for the GM job would have traded Adams. They think he's their best asset. I don't think that story's going to die. I think that's news. I do think that's news. They can say all the right things, but if the Jets put together a package where they are with no quarterback, I mean, Wait a minute, Devontae wasn't happy when they had a quarterback when they were trying to move the ball. Now, he's, you think he's going to be happy with Aiden O'Connell mm. or a rookie quarterback? This is news. This okay. is news that kind of got pushed down to the side. This is a bigger story than you think it is. Good to know. Something that we will How be like monitoring. That? I love it. This is what... Michael, that's why you're the man. Okay, we got to hit the break. Love is in the air or is it? When we come back, Michael and I will break down some of the new head coach and quarterback pairings in the NFL for 2024. Who's a perfect match and who's destined for failure? This is the Lombardi Line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. Now here is your host, Stormy Bonatoni on v the sports betting network. We are back here on the Lombardi line. If you haven't signed up for our VEASAN daily newsletter yet, what are you doing? Now's the time you get expert picks and analysis straight to your inbox every single day. And our guy, Bill Aidy today discussing a little bit of golf. VEASAN's golf betting podcast, he writes, says the perfect name for the 2024 PGA Tour season. Long shots. Make sure you check out the pod with Wes Reynolds, Matt Brown, and Kelly Bidlin. But this season in the PGA has started with six consecutive winners who had triple-digit odds, bringing us to this week's Genesis Open, where Tiger Woods is one of the longest shots in the elite 70-man field as he makes his first official appearance since the Masters. VEASAN.com slash newsletter for all that great information every single day and of course remember if you're looking for podcasts while you're searching for long shots you can also search for the Lombardi line right there hit subscribe like give us a little Absolutely. comment all the things Michael hey uh, the newsletter to me it just gets better and better the man's the man is a wordsmith Bill AD the other day is he wrote in there which was one of the great lines oh, probably I'm so old that I knew what he was talking about when he said that only if Mama Cass would have attended the first Super Bowl back in the day so I sent him a picture of Mama Cass from the Mamas and the Papas but he's right I mean had we known that you know if we bring in a celebrity singer it could enhance the game but I think that newsletter for me, it's such a great way to start your day in terms of what is on tap for the day in terms of the betting community, in terms of our sports world. And, and I think it kind of gives you a narrower focus of what's on, of what we have to accomplish and what you can go to your DraftKings apps mm -hmm. to bet. Yeah, Bill does a great job every day. And also, in addition to the newsletter, when you're a vcin.com subscriber, you get an additional email, too, that has all of the hosts and guests for every single day, all of their picks. And that includes futures, whatever the daily bets are for certain games in the NBA, college basketball. Lots of great stuff that you can get here with our crew at vcin. And, and now for us... We always try to stick with the larger theme of the NFL, of course. We're so grateful to have your expertise as a former NFL GM and, you know, so much about personnel that this Valentine's Day, we would like to, yeah. you know, look at a couple of these head coach and quarterback new matchups for 2024-25 and see if you think it's a Valentine's match made in heaven or if, you know, by the time the season starts, there might be a new Valentine in town. Let's let's go there. So, you know how sometimes we do like, love, hate? Let's do like, love, politely turn down this Valentine's Day. And we'll start with the Las Vegas Raiders picking up on some of the conversation we had about Devontae Adams. And you think he wants to have his quarterback as Aiden O'Connell? I'm not so sure. What do you think about the combination of a defensive head coach in Antonio Pierce and his current quarterback in Aiden O'Connell? Do you think that they are the perfect Valentines? Do you like it? Do you love it? Or is this one that you think we're going to have somebody new come day one of the NFL season? 
Well, I think Luke Getz is the Valentine that's going to be under the most pressure because, mm. you know, we know Antonio Pierce, who'd never been a coordinator in the National Football League before, is really in the role to be the motivator, the organizer, the guy who's going to promote the team. Getz's job is to get that quarterback. Now, Pierce was there with Daniels at Arizona State, recruited him. So he's got a background in the kid. I think Pierce is going to be the driving force with Telesco to try to find this quarterback. But the problem is, I'm not sure that anybody's going to give up two or three when you get to move up. It's going to be a challenge. There's going to be pressure on Pierce, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on Telesco. This this marriage between Pierce and O'Connell, I don't think it's going to last very long. I think it's lasted only because they didn't want to put Garoppolo in the game. I think this is going to be the Brenda and Eddie relationship. It's going to break up. Well, and, and I wouldn't get people's hopes up too much about Justin Fields either because we, we talked about Luke Getze and that connection there and how that yeah. could actually be a potentially. <laughs> I've done some work on that. I've done some work on that. <laughs> well, and I don't think that one. I, I mean, agree. I don't, I don't know. That one's, that one's not, I don't know if that's in the cards if some people within that building have their way. Let me just say that. Sure. Um, I think Russell Wilson maybe could be an intriguing name there um, with, with his yeah. current contract situation. For, on DraftKings, Russell Wilson plus 650 to take his first snap of the regular season next year with the Raiders. The Falcons are another interesting one as we have Justin Fields in the conversation because Desmond Ritter is the current quarterback, new head coach Raheem Morris, who we were discussing moments ago in News or Noise with the Bill Belichick conversation and Arthur Blank. But Desmond Ritter, I don't think Anybody expects him to be at this point the long term solution. And Justin Fields is a name that I've heard brought up a good bit for Atlanta. Yeah, I, I think to me it depends on Raheem, what he thinks, having played against the Bears, understanding that. What Zach Robinson, remember now, this is the McVeigh system that they're bringing to Atlanta play action, you know, heavy run, which fits what Atlanta wants to do. Could Fields play in that? We'll see. You know, it could make some sense. The kid's from Georgia. He started his career at Georgia, transferred to Ohio State. So I don't think the Ritter-Morris relationship, is it's more in the Brenda Renetti category. It's not going to last through the summer of 75. But I think Raheem and with the next quarterback will. Let's go to Carolina because from the time that Bryce Young was drafted, he was never getting Valentine's Day cards from his head coach, Frank Reich. What about Dave <laughs> no. Canales? He's been very complimentary in his opening press conference about his excitement and the potential of Bryce Young. Could they be a perfect match this Valentine's? I, I think they can be the perfect match. Now, I think to me, you know, you're always wondering, can, is this going to be a long marriage or a short one? Mm. You know, but I think for the short term, at least for two years, Canales has got a six-year contract. He's coming in there to fix Bryce Young. He's coming in there to fix the offense. So I think this is the perfect Valentine's Day for both gentlemen. You know which one on this screen I think is the best of the best Valentine's Day matchup? I'm sure you could steal it out of my mouth, but Jim Harbaugh and Justin Herbert. That is just chef's kiss. Yeah, that's kiss. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to get flowers every week. They're going to get chocolates. They're going to, you know, they're going to have a box of chocolates. This is the Forrest Gump relationship with Jenny. You know, we could put that in that category. The one that doesn't last here is the Mayo Mac Jones Bailey Zappi. You can scratch that off. You see, know, you can scratch see, Michael, it, which is fascinating because. I was going to say real quickly, go let's go to your reference with the box of chocolates with the Patriots. You never know what you're going to get. You never know, and, and you're not getting Zappy or Jones, I can tell you that. You know, one of the things that people talk about, and this has come up, the, the Patriots haven't spent a lot of money. People think that, well, Belichick didn't want to spend money and craft it. One of the things was there was a strong contingency within that building. They wanted, they were saving money for the Mac Jones fifth year. No more they need to save for the Mac Jones fifth year. They don't, or the extension. So I do believe that the Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi administration with, with Jared, Gerard Mayo is over with. I mean, they're going to draft a quarterback and life is going to go on. Who of those young quarterbacks do you think would make the most sense? And I know availability is a big part of that. And if they want to trade up, which I don't necessarily foresee happening, but that's a part of it as well. But who do you think would be best? Well, I think, you know, look, the McAdoo, Again, I think sometimes we label coaches based on what they did as a head coach, not based on what they can do. McAdoo is very good at evaluating talent. I've talked to him about a lot of quarterbacks in the draft. We've spent a lot of time going over it. 
And I think he really has a good understanding of what it takes to play at a high level quarterback in the National Football League. So that's going to help Elliott Wolf as Elliott Wolf sorts through these quarterbacks. I think to me, I haven't studied him enough, but Daniel certainly looks like he's got the skill set, whether he has the body or not. I need to watch more Drake May. Brian Broaddus mm -hmm. wasn't high on him the last time we had him on the show. Russell had him as his third quarterback. I need to watch because I do see some real talent in the kid. But I think to me, if you're the if you are the Patriots, you have to pick the right one for you. And you're probably not going to be able to move up to get him. Look, let's face it. I mean, the Texans get, were sat there at two and got Stroud. Now, I know they picked Will Anderson at two and they traded up to three to get Stroud. But to me, you can go back and forth on that conversation. You know, and, and they got the right player for their team. I'm not sure that Bryce Young isn't the right player. What I do know is Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi aren't the right player. The Seahawks and Geno Smith, he obviously had a career year a couple years ago, earned the new contract extension. Now he pairs up with Mike McDonald. What do you think of that Valentine's match? I like it. I, I really do. I almost put Mike McDonald as the most likely to exceed in our little Ooh. block that we did the last hour. I, I, I think this is a good hire. I think he's smart. I, I think he's receptive to information. I don't know him personally, but just watching his behavior and seeing who he's hired on his staff, I, I think he's got a chance. And I think Gino has proven time and time again that he can improve. I think they're going to be a much better coach defensively. I think they'll be better offensively. And I think the Seattle team, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to be interested to see what their numbers posted at because I think we've lost sight that they have more talent there than we led on to believe. I really think that. And, and Michael, if you look on your TV screen from Adam Schefter, the Seattle coaching hires that have all been made official, any initial thoughts there on, on everything that's come through? Scott, um, Carl Scott, the defensive pass game coordinator, being the only holdover from Pete Carroll's staff. Well, Ryan Grubb, I mean, he's going to bring a little bit of a dimension. He was the highest paid offensive – he was the highest paid assistant coach in college football last year at the University of Washington. So he's a very bright mind. We saw what they were able to do. Kalen DeBoard trusted him, took him to Alabama. He didn't get the head coaching job at Washington. Jed Fish did. But I, I think this is a good step. I love the Leslie Frazier hire because I think you need somebody with experience on the staff, especially as young as McDonald is. Okay, we're going to step aside. And while it's not a new pairing in Cincinnati, Zach Taylor is surely looking forward to next season having his QB1 in Drew Joe Burrow back. Harry Gagnon will join us next on the Lombardi line. Why Harry is betting on Burrow already. This is the Lombardi line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. Now here is your host Stormy Bonatoni on VSEN, the sports betting network. If you're looking for a betting edge on college hoops, the VEASAN experts have you covered. Become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today with our introductory offer of only $9.99. Subscribe today. You'll get our daily best bet emails, 24-7 video access, the upcoming college hoops betting guide with bracket breakdowns, plus full access to everything we do at VEASAN.com, including our betting splits on every single game. Don't miss out, though. This is a limited time offer. Visit vcin.com slash subscribe to sign up. Again, just $9.99. That's vcin.com slash subscribe. V-S-I-N.com slash subscribe. This is the Lombardi line. Michael Lombardi and Stormy Bon and Tony with you. And we welcome in great friend of the show back in his regular spot on a Wednesday. Harry Gagnon, host of the Against All Odds podcast, former Vegas sportsbook supervisor. And you were out here in Vegas last week on Media Row. We saw you come over to the DraftKings set. How did the town treat you, Harry? Yeah, so it was great. It was great all week. We had a blast um, uh, with some a bunch of different celebrities, football players mm -hmm. playing some pranks on people and players. It was fantastic. I admit that where I I had lost a bet to cousin Sal, so I had to do something in return. So what I had to do actually, when you saw me in and out there on the set all over the place, I was uh, tracking down NFL players, either current or ex players, where to pay off my losing side of the bet. I had to recite a Taylor Swift line to these guys <laughs> and just say it. And then as soon as I'm done, look them in the eyes and ask them for a hug. So there you go. What? I love it. I love it. So <laughs> yeah, listen, I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, DeMarcus Ware, DeMarcus Ware, Michael hugs me better than my wife does. I'll tell you that. How about that? Oh, wow. And that's what you <laughs> need to hear that. on Valentine's day. I'm sure. What was the best Taylor Swift <laughs> line though? What, which, which line were you most familiar with that you were delivering to these players? I guess, uh, I guess 
It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Can I have a hug? At least it wasn't. It's a love story. <laughs> Baby, just say yes, because I feel like that would be very uncomfortable for all these strangers I, you were walking I, I, up to. I, 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 you know what? I use that line on uh, Donovan McNabb. Actually. Well done. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, we missed you on. We were busy. We had so many things going yeah, on. I know you were busy. So, what did you end up? What did you end up playing in the uh, in your in your bets of the week? What did you end up going with, and how'd you do? Well, you know, I did pretty good still overall. I did have San Francisco minus the two, which was a little was definitely rough. But I really more or less focused on um, the player props, and I did have a teaser, of course. Of course, I had a teaser. I had San Fran with the uh, with the under in a teaser, so that hit every, every if you play the teaser any which way you hit, which is really cool. But I did hit a lot of player props, guys. I did hit uh, right off the bat. I gave out on the show uh, last last week. Uh, Kelsey first reception for the Bengal, or excuse me, first reception for the Chiefs. Sorry, at um, two to one, uh, he's hit that in four of the last five uh, playoff games. I had uh, Fred Warner most tackles. At plus three twenty, that tied with Bolton of Kansas City, so you still get a nice plus money on that side. And Kelsey, I know only one yard at halftime, but I had Kelsey all over the place in props. I had him um, over receptions, over six and a half, and I had him over seventy two and a half receiving yards. Which again, on the show, I gave we gave that out last week, where I just love that prop because that makes thirteen straight playoff games now. Thirteen straight where Travis Kelsey has had at least seventy yards receiving. Yeah, and to your point about the teasers, it was a rough week for the don't tease totals crowd because, as you mentioned, it hit every, mm. every way, and that was that was fun for those of us that were involved from that standpoint. And listen, you have to—I know that we're we're talking up the Travis Kelsey props, and they all got there. Kudos to you, but you had to have been sweating in that first half when your boy had yeah. one catch. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, I know he's going to get his in the second half. It's going to, especially if yeah. they're down, which you know they were down ten three at half. Uh, and he's going to get there, but he's going to, but still asking for 70 yards plus in just a half is a lot. But again, unbelievable job by Mahomes, and uh, they did it again. I mean, I I go against them all the time, and it's not paying off. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but uh, maybe I'll jump on them next year. We'll see. I don't know. Well, no, you won't, because I, I mean, in the rundown today, we we have you going <laughs> all in on the Bengals, 15 and one. I mean, so yeah, Super right. Bowl 59. Can you believe it's 59 already? My Lord. Jeez, that seems, wow, seems yeah. like I, you know. I Don't mean, think that's about it. Don't think about it. Thank oh, well, you, Stormy. Guys, think... uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, we know this guy's got got Mahomes kryptonite, so it's not a bad play if he stays healthy. Uh, I, absolutely, Michael. I think at 15 to 1, look, there's other teams I like out there. I still love uh, Dan Campbell and the Lions. They're at 12 to 1. Amazing 12 to 1. They haven't they won, finally won a playoff game in 30 years, and they're 12 to 1. Uh, a couple teams I don't really care for right now. Miami 21. I just think they're soft defensively. And the Bills 12 to 1. I'm kind of giving up on them. Curious a little bit about Harbaugh and Herbert, how they're going to mix 30 to 1 with the Chargers. Interesting. But I really like the Bengals, maybe at 15 to 1. Watching what Mahomes did this season had to be major league motivation for Joe Burrow and the rest of the Bengals. Since he's still, look, still a solid squad. Just happened to have one of those seasons, guys, where it was just injury plagued all season. Chase wasn't 100%. A lot. Higgins missed five games. Sam Hubbard missed some big games for them at the defensive end. And Burrow missed seven games. I think this team uh, still very solid. Know that they can dethrone Kansas City when healthy. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. So at 15 to 1, I think the Bengals are going to be back starting next season. I'm 100% with you. We need somebody to knock the Chiefs off that AFC right. pedestal. So I am on board with you and, and Joe Cool, Joey B getting it done there let's go to a little nba talk here because all-star weekend is upon us and, and michael you'll like this for inquiring minds will take place yeah. in indianapolis indiana from february 16th to 18th the 73rd all-star game will be played on sunday at gainbridge field house but all-star night will be at lucas oil stadium because we need all the details of where it's at because we have the power of google harry what are you looking at for the <laughs> nba all-star game <laughs> So I'll tell you, the game itself, uh, I don't know. I like the other stuff. You know what? I like um, last year, if you remember, on the show here, I did give out Dame Lillard, who was from Salt Lake City area. Uh, the game was in Salt Lake last year to win the three-point shooting contest, and he did. So I'm going to give out Tyrese Halliburton, the pacer himself. He's been there a couple of years. He's having his best season this uh, in his en uh, in entire career this year. I'm going to take him plus 550 Halliburton to win the three-point shooting contest. And in his first round score, how about this, guys? At minus 110, 
I'm taking over 22 and a half for Halliburton to score. Uh, you know, again, Indianapolis, in his, with his, he's got his home crowd back in. Again, best season of his career, 41% career shooter from three-point range. Um, 11 times this year, guys, 11 times he's made five or more threes in games. Uh, I'm going to go with Halliburton. The uh, the Pacers, the games in Indianapolis, why not? I'm going to take Halliburton all over the place. Hey, you know, well, now that we're into it, right, now we're getting down it. Is there a team you like? Have you placed any future bets in the NBA, Harry? You know, I have, and it's very interesting. Um, I have made some on Phoenix, uh, my hometown Suns here. Uh, I do have a, I do, I do have a nice bet out there. Also for the division, at the division you can get uh, the Southeast Division. How about this? I've got the Magic right now. You can get them at plus one twenty-five. I've got them at two to one to win the Southeast. Uh, look, they they won thirty-four games last year. Guys, they've already got 29 wins through 54 games this season. Uh, Miami, who they're, they're tied with currently in the Southeast, has lost uh, nine of its last 14 games. Um, the, my, last time they met, the Magic blew out Miami by 18. Uh, Bacaro has been a fabulous since coming in uh, to this league. He's averaging 23-7 and seven in his second year. Franz Wagner getting over 20, uh, 20 points a game in just his third season. Cole Anthony off the bench. Is averaging like 13, 4, and 4. And at home this season, Miami just, you know, they don't have a great home field advantage or home court advantage. We know this. We've seen this before in the playoffs uh, in the seasons in the past. They're only 15 and 13 at home, while the Magic 17 and 8 at home this season. I think the Magic plus 130 for the division is uh, something, 125, 130, something to look at, look at. I think they're definitely a little, I think they're slightly bad ahead of Miami right now. Okay, good stuff. We've also got a 13-game slate in the association today in the defending NBA champ Nuggets. Our six-point favorite right now against the Kings. A little birdie told me you've got to play in this one. Where are you looking? Yeah, let's go Nuggets. Let's go Nuggets here. I know they've lost two in a row, but those were on the road. Nuggets much better at home than they are on the road. Denver just one game over 500 on the road, but 17 games over 500 at home. Uh, Denver 0-2 versus Sacramento this year, but both games are on in Sacramento. They lost to them by 29 this past Friday. Nuggets get revenge, blow out the Kings, cover easily. Kings do give up the third most points in the Western Conference. Gave up 130 on the road in Phoenix here last night. Denver 3-0 in their last three games versus Sacramento in Denver. Two of those three, by the way, wins by double digits, guys. So I'm going to lay the six with Denver tonight. Harry, great stuff as always. It was it. great getting to see you in person in Vegas. Thanks for doing this, pal. Absolutely, guys. Thanks, Harry. You got it. You got it. Make sure you follow him on X at AAO Harry. Check out the Against All Odds podcast wherever you get your podcast as well. And remember, tomorrow, too, uh, the GM Shuffle new edition is going to come out, recapping everything from this week. No, Lots of news no, no, notes. tomorrow. Oh, you're Stormy, not doing we're, one. No, we're taking, we're, we're taking this week off. Wow. We're going to catch our breath here, and then we'll be back Monday. I'm sorry. We'll be back on that's, Monday. That's my yes. fault, Michael. we got to just... get Femi some rest before he goes out over to his bachelor party, which we, we're still trying to figure out why he left Las Vegas for a bachelor party but we'll we'll get to the bottom of that See, at some point that's what it is classic femi taking days off no just kidding he fills in for me <laughs> literally every time i miss so god bless femi uh, um we're gonna step aside valentine's day can be a day for love it can be a day where hearts are broken or it can be a day where you just cave and say why not why not wednesday coming up next This is the Lombardi Line with former NFL executive Michael Lombardi. Now here is your host, Stormy Bonatoni, on VSEN, the sports betting network. This week on DraftKings Sportsbook, new customers can deposit five bucks and get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets if your first bet loses. Download the app and use the promo code VSIN when you sign up. That's V-S-I-N. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Question. Maybe a stupid one, but I'm just spitballing here. Can it make you say why not? That wasn't a stupid question. It's time for Why Not Wednesday. I mean, why not? You know when they say it's so crazy it just might work? Uh, like I said before the break, it's Valentine's Day, which can be a day for love, a day where hearts are broken, or a day where you finally cave into that person that's been trying to date to you for years and you just say why not. That is the spirit. That we are why having. Not? Yeah, for this where, why, why not? Day. Where are you go? Where are you and Chris going to go celebrate your first Valentine's Day together as a married couple? Don't judge us too hard. We had no interest in fighting the masses for a restaurant no reservation. Question. 
We are getting takeout wings for the house and we're very excited about it. <laughs> like this, it's we're just love one it. of those I couples. Could love it. You know, what it's always, you, you should always, like George Costanza said, you should swim against the sand. You know, it's perfect. You know, go for the tuna, not the not the chicken salad. It's perfect. You know, and the, tomorrow go out. There'll be plenty yes. of reservations available tomorrow. See, there are other days. We Fake it till you make it. What about you and Millie? You guys got there anything going days. on? No, she stayed in California. I came oh. back to, I got, I have Bella and Lana as my Valentine's Day today. So that's <laughs> what I'm fall. dealing with. Smart girl, that Millie, though, <laughs> staying away from the snow. Uh, okay, let's get into it. We got a couple fun headlines and potential long shot bets to dive into on a Why Not Wednesday. CeeDee Lamb on The Edge with Micah Parsons this week, talking about his contract, said, I can't give you exact numbers right now, but I'll tell you this want to be one of the top paid wide receivers for sure if not the highest paid that's always the goal could you say why not to cd lamb becoming the highest paid wide out in the nfl with his contract this offseason well certainly you could say why not to that i mean he's really a good player and he's done a tremendous job of of being the number one receiver i think what gets kicked around too often and I was kidding Russell about it today on the draft because we got seven receivers, 22 receivers going in the first round. You know, that it is hard to be a number one receiver. You've got to really be really good at that. And I think to me, he can be. And so I think he's going to earn it. And knowing Jerry, they'll, they'll structure the contract so that he's got the ability to get his money. And on an average, in terms of put him in the top five receivers of the league, I don't think there's any question he'll do that. Yeah, and it'll be interesting because last offseason, while we're, there was so much talk about running back contracts, we didn't really see any of those guys who were eligible for extensions in the wide receiver room get any. So this year will be an interesting offseason because you've also got Justin Jefferson, who he was talking about trying to break the bank with his contract extension. Um, so, yeah, this will be an interesting offseason for wideouts. How about head coaches? Could you say why not to new Panthers head coach Dave Canales? winning coach of the year in 2024-25. His odds are 20 to 1. You know, I would say why not to that because if he gets Bryce Young to play at a good level, we know, look, I mean, we, we were wrong, clearly, last year, that we thought Carolina had a chance to be a much better team based on they were good defensively, based on Steve Wilkes as the head coach, what he was able to do. You know, they finished a, a game out of first place in the South last year. We did, and they ran the football effectively. There were so many things that we were talking ourselves into, me included, you, that we, all Bryce Young had to do mm -hmm. was play half decent. Well, that proved to be wrong. Well, if he can get Bryce Young to play well and they can fix the offense, which I'm pretty sure he'll do, he fixed the offense with Baker Mayfield down there, then I think you could say why not? Because look, the, the South is wide open. Who are we competing with? Baker Mayfield's going to get 40 million. They've got cap issues. They're going to sign Mike Evans. Derek Carr, new coach. He's another offense for poor Derek to have to go through. Oh my, what's going to happen there? You know, can he fix his red zone? How good are they going to be on offense? They're going through a bunch of changes in New Orleans. I mean, Dennis Allen loses one game. Everybody has him getting fired. So it's wide open. So why not, Stormy? Yeah, and coming off a two-win season, and you obviously were the worst team in the league, so the schedule is going to be a little bit easier on paper. A lot of things that could help the cause for them to up that win total. And if, to your point, if he's able to do a little bit of with Bryce Young, what he did with Baker Mayfield, I don't hate it. And yes, we do have coach of the year odds, by the way. Again, he was 20 to 1. Jim Harbaugh is your favorite where things opened up at plus 550, followed by Matt LaFleur at 8 to 1 and Raheem Morris at 10 to 1. Now, we talked earlier in the show about who the Steelers next quarterback might be and how Mike Tomlin kind of likes Justin Fields, according to reports. But what about Kirk Cousins to the Steelers, Michael, on DraftKings 25 to 1? I can't say why not to this ah, because it just financially it. it doesn't make sense. They can't. I, I agree. I think they should have traded for him if they could have, but he doesn't fit. I mean, act, right now they're at about 250 million of active contracts, right? And that's after they made a couple. They trimmed some of their players. They got rid of the punter. They got rid of an offensive lineman. And of course, they got rid of Mitchell. They're carrying almost eight million of dead money into this thing. So they, they're going to have to fix some things. They're a young team. It's going to have to be the right price. They're going to have to fix some contracts to get below it. Omar Khan, the general manager, will do a good job in that area. But they need a veteran quarterback. There's no question. They still don't have Rudolph signed. They want to do that as well. 
I just don't think they can go down the 35 to $40 million road. It may be the right road to go down. I don't think they can afford to go down that road, though. Yeah, I mean, imagine the Steelers made the postseason this year with no quarterback. If they actually had one, what could be potentially for Mike Tomlin, who, by the way, in case you missed it, never had a losing season. Fun fact. Um, the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> okay, that's one. All right, it's February the 14th. You said it once. <laughs> had to get the first one out there. Had to get the first one What's out there. What's the over on that number? What's the over on that? I, I, let's say it's 50 on that. Every 50 times. I mean, if we did it on all shows, it would probably be over 250, right? You know what, Michael? Just for our show, we should get like a tally going. Just have it set and ready yeah. to go as we're previewing the next season. Find out what that Steelers preseason win total is going to be. Oh, I'm ready for it. This is what this is what I live for. Let's go to my team, the San Francisco 49ers. Can you say why not to this team getting redemption in 2024-25, yeah. bouncing back and winning Super Bowl 59? I could say why not to that for sure because they they have a quarterback on a rookie contract. They lose Greenlaw to an Achilles, right? I mean, that really hurt them yeah. in the game. And when they blitzed in the fourth quarter, their blitzes didn't look good, probably because a lot of the guys might not have known exactly what to do. They can correct some things on their team, and they can still be really effective. We know they can move the football. We know the defensive front can be very good. Yeah, why not? They're going to be there. Look, we don't even discuss it because he played good, but everybody, you know, nobody said Brock Purdy's a bad player. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. He played really well. And the pr fact that we have no nobody's critiquing him or yelling about him means he played yeah. really good. Because if he would have had one bad pass in the game, we would have heard about it for six weeks. <laughs> Two years in the league, NFC Championship, and a Super Bowl appearance. I think he's I. Now, I already know you're going to say no to this one. But I'm going to throw it out there anyways because I'm salty. Can you say why not to the Chiefs missing the playoffs? Plus 230. Just a down year. Things fall apart for Kansas City. I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Well, look, let, let's be. Let's say why not to this. Because if, if Mahomes <laughs> has, say Mahomes has what happened to Joe Burrow. Oh. Right? I mean, look, for all the conversation that we talk about how great the Chiefs are, without, you know, they when you lose Mariano Rivera to close games mm -hmm. out, right? Their margin for victory this year was small. It was. They played great defense. You know, they did some timely things. They were able to run the football when they needed to, and Andy called runs. They're still going to be in some cap situations. They're not going to just overtly improve this team. They're mm -hmm. going to make some moves, no question. But for me, why not? I mean, if they lose Mahomes, it's going to be problematic. And you could say, why not for any team? True. If yeah. Josh Allen goes down for Buffalo, McDermott will be in the unemployment line. Yeah, that's a good point. I have this weird feeling that Blaine Gabbert isn't going to give you the same offensive prowess as a Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. So great point. Great point. No, I mean, you know, when he got hit by Bosa early in the game, I'm like, oh, boy, that's a hit. You know, he got up right away. Like it, But you could see that was a sting. So I can't wait to throw this one at you because I've already made my stance abundantly clear. But Will Hill was filling in for you yesterday, and he was making a case for the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Could you say why not to a 14-1 to ticket for them to win the AFC with Aaron Rodgers back? I can't say why not to that. I, I, I like to hear Will's logic on that. I was flying, so I didn't hear it yesterday. I was flying back here to New Jersey, but I, I, look, I believe in culture. I believe in chemistry, and I don't believe that a guy can come off an Achilles at age 40 and be really good. And we, you know, you gave out that number on Douglas as a career as a general manager. I know he gets A's in every single draft. I understand that, but I, I haven't seen it yet. I know they're supposed to be the most talented team on defense. They couldn't stop the run all last year. And they, too, are like San Francisco and like Seattle and like Dallas. They're playing so much zone. If they get in a man-to-man -man game, can they hold up? We'll see. 27-60, and 60, that number, with Joe Douglas as the GM since 2019 for those inquiring minds. Michael, this was so fun. What a day. I love it. I mean, you didn't ask me the one I really wanted to hit. 22 to 1 Sixers NBA why not no chance you get you knew that was a no way stormy you wouldn't even ask it I put it on the rundown for a reason but we you know you run out of time don't worry we'll have plenty of opportunities to talk about the 76ers that's a wrap for today we'll see you tomorrow on the Lombardi line get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA new customers